written, was, this, I've had it quite a while. At the time, Karen Connolly was um, a very young, uh, well-known poet from Calgary. Um, and at the time she wrote this book, she had, I think, was about 17, and she had gone to Thailand as an, almost like an exchange student type of thing. And what she did with this, she wrote it from her diary, but naturally you don't write absolutely everything that's in your diary. You take interesting parts out and you expand them into simple, you know, separate little stories, but it is written in a, in a diary kind of form uh, about her um, starting, her start, starts, this is August 21st, 1986. Leaving Canada, a view of the body of mountains, deep sockets of aquamarine, blue veins slipping over cliff sides, stone edges splintering from the earth like cracked bones. When I think of the span of countries, when I run my fingers over the skin of a map, I get dizzy. I'm too high up now. I should have glided into this journey on a boat. As the country pulls out from under me, I overturn like a glass on a yank tablecloth. I spill. Land steadies people, holds them, even if they imagine they control it. Land owns and defines it. Without it, we become something else. So that's the beginning of her journey, flying from Canada over first to Japan, where they stop. Um, and that is another type of travel memoir. This one here, also written by a woman that's a member of the BC Travel Writers, it's called Traveling the Sun, and it's a healing journey in Morocco, Tunisia, and Spain. And what had happened was um, Sandra's son had unfortunately died quite unexpectedly and suddenly and young. And then she also was um, uh, recovering from cancer. So it was definitely a healing journey. When she, when she went on this trip to try and to, to, to focus and get her life back together again. So this is the way she starts her story. I came to the Mediterranean because my soul is weeping. That's her opening line and then you know exactly that this is a healing journey. So I'll, I'll pass these around, you can take a look. Um, is anybody here interested in actually uh, writing their travels up as a book. Yeah. What will your What will yours be about? Europe. <laughs> and, and did you say you too? Mm -hmm. About Europe. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I sent some emails like that other lady in that book. I sent emails out to people, and then your emails are like a novel. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. Maybe I'll do a book about them. <laughs> I, I, I put a memoir started, and actually my memoir is called Life Below the Acropolis. From the moment in my life when I decided that I was going to go and live in Greece, and everything that ha has happened to me since then, which is like, I, it was almost like I was meant to be there. It was almost like a past regression trip for me to go. And I'm very involved in that country, so much so that I'm constantly wishing I was there when I'm, when I'm here, I wish I was there. And then I'm, when I'm there, I know I have to be here because I have to be here for my writing things and stuff like that. But um, that's what my theme will be, Life Below the Acropolis. And I'll probably add, parts of it will be a lot of the travel stories I've written about Greece, because most, not all, but a great many of my travel articles are. The novel that I just took 15 years to write and research was like a journey in itself, because a lot of the research I did was going to the places that I was writing about, and then I would also write a travel article about that, too. So I, I would combine the both things. Uh, working on the novel and writing travel articles about it as well. So um, that's, that was my idea for a memoir, writing about that. And um, you have the notes here about how to go about writing those 
travel memoirs, but here's a little exercise that I'm going to show you, which, what if I might think, say, when you're trying to remember things that are from the past, this is a really good exercise to do. It. Take a paper, fold it down the middle like that. Everybody doing that? I'm going to see what we come up with. Behind that, in, in another part of the backyard, was another small house that was being used by uh, one of the um, archaeologists from the Acropolis restoring some pieces of, uh, of artifacts back there. And then upstairs in the house was the, the, the Yaya, the grandma, and Dina and Yanni, the people that owned the house, and I lived in the basement suite. So that's the setting there. The people would be Dina and Yanni and Yaya. And Roberto, who was the artist from Argentina, who became my very, very best friend. And then there were various people coming and going, and there were various incidences that would happen there. And as you start writing the names and the people out, you will start remembering the incidences that happened there. Um, I remember one day walking through the Iron Gate and noticing the plants. There were some big plants. I must have been away for a while because I came back there were these big plants and I looked at them. And they were marijuana plants. <laughs> and I thought, what's he doing with that? Is he growing them for himself or is he growing them because I don't know I never asked and that I was I, I called Robbie to see and the Andy must have heard me talking about the plants because the next day they were gone <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a, a couple that used to come to visit uh, Robbie and the, uh, this, this pair, or a pair um, she was a, a, a wannabe model Greek American woman and she she had a she had a. Uh, she was the mistress of a of a wealthy married Greek jeweler or something like that. But she had a boyfriend living with her who was kind of living off her. He was an American guy, and we used to call them the Hollywoods because that's what they were like. But she was always on my case, and I can't remember how, how many times she'd come in the courtyard 
and she'd look down through my little open window into my suite and she'd start throwing insults at me. Just because that's what she was like. No, it was like lots of stuff. Lots of interesting things going on in that little house. And so there's a whole bunch of memories just wrapped around that one place. So go ahead, go ahead for, I'll give you 10 minutes to write down um, some of the things that you can think of when you write place and when you write um, people and, and events. To see how much it jogs your memory. 